Hi, this is BJ from Hearns, and today we're going to be talking about tools, all kinds of modeling tools. We'll get into uh, tweezers, uh, side cutters, sanding papers, all sorts of bits and pieces. Some really specialist tools as well, and um, we'll give a general tour. Okay, so we've modeling. We've got a lot of uh, specialty tools. A lot of it's uh, really fine. It's not only for modeling. We get a lot of people that come in for you know, tools for all kinds of hobbies, you know, whether it's textiles or um, uh, sculpting. So all this sort of stuff works very well. So across here, we've got a lot of different saws. So these are the saw blades. They're available in all different kinds of uh, uh, teeth per inch. You get fine ones and coarse ones. You know, you get your really heavy duty Tamiya saws here. And then we've got all the various blades, which fit into these kinds of exacto uh, uh, style American uh, knife handles. So you've got the fine one here, this is the most popular one. So this one is like a, a scalpel type modeling knife. This is a must have for everyone. And then you've got your broader ones, which uh, can handle a bit more pressure. Uh, use them for carving. These ones with the bigger handles can um, uh, be more comfortable with the saw blades, which we saw above. Got a little swivel knife. This one here is a burnishing tool, which is for rubbing down transfers and also for sculpting. Uh, you got here, there's an awl for making holes or scratching. Uh, this one here is a pounce wheel. So we've got all the different sizes. You can use those for marking little dots, even for rivet lines. This one here is a full set of all the uh, burnishing tools. And then we've got all these uh, Tamiya tools here. These are really, really handy. So these are the photo etch really fine saws. Probably can't see, but there's really fine teeth on these. And you fold these up and they slide into one of these handles. And then these are the Tamiya knives. So Japanese style knives, they use a, a smaller type blade and we've got the spare blades here as well. So it all depends on the type of feel you like. Uh, we've got all the tweezers. So the Tamiya type tweezers here, curved ones and straight ones, both are handier to have. And we've got all the range of XL tweezers here too. So all different lengths. These are the really sharp ones, self-closing ones. So obviously the self-closing ones, you know, you just grip it on and it stays locked on until you release it. And then you've got these sort of self-locking ones too. So traditional type, but you can slide on to lock. And then we've got side cutters here. You get your basic side cutters. And as you spend more on the side cutter, the finer the cut's gonna be. So I don't have them all here, but you know, you go up to the, the Tamiya ones, the Ming ones, and then you've got the God Hand ones, which are super, super sharp. And then we've got various types of photo etch tools. So these ones are for, um, oh, actually they're the decal tweezers. I've got the photo etch tweezers a bit further down. We've got the Zoron range of um, tools as well. Really well built in America. These are, are very nice side cutters. These are the wire cutters. You've got your hemostat there, which is, you know, a bit like the things you use, um, they use in surgical uh, theaters. These are really nice. This is a Tamiya diamond file. So very fine diamond particles and they give a really uh, uh, smooth uh, cut. So these, these will work on really hard materials too. So you, even if you're doing RC, uh, cleaning up um, carbon fiber or you know on RC car chassis or a drone chassis, perfect. And then you've got all these various knives and then we've got the pickup tool which has got a little claw that comes out. Various knives. There's the, uh, the bending uh, tweezers I was thinking of. So they're really good for the uh, metal earth type kits. You got your little uh, scissors, super sharp. And then the pin vices, these Tamiya pin vices are super nice. This one's got a little ball bearing on the end, really smooth. And then you've got drill bits. This is a little punch tool, really handy if you're making small uh, circles. There's a little Vallejo tweezers with magnifying glass on the end. So we all tend to need something to help us see these days. Got all the file sets. And then we've got the airbrush cleaning tools. So, you know, you got little brushes, bigger brushes, and that's a full set with all the lubricants and the sealer. There's some curved um, pliers there. That's handy for doing uh, jewelry making or you're making little uh, circles. Got the basic scriber here, which is good for cutting plastic card um, and also for marking and panel lines. I do have some more special stuff as well, which we'll get into in another episode. Uh, we've got wire benders, we've got the screwdriver sets. There's more uh, drill bits. You got decal scissors, which are really handy because they're really small head and you can get right up close to the print uh, and cut it out so you don't have all that clearness on the earth. This is a really good bending pliers, also good for um, a large photo wedge. It's really flat. Uh, also for, uh, uh, what is it, the Middle Earth stuff. I use that to make the tram actually. So you got the plank bending pliers, which is a must have for all the wooden ship kits. Uh, this is a really good handy 
basic tool set. So you got the side cutters, you got a file, screwdriver, tweezers, and also a part separator, which is normally used for all the Gundam kits because they snap together and you can pop that in there and you sort of get all the parts separated. Uh, this is also handy for painting. So you clip all your bits on there and then the end you can poke into a bit of foam or a bit of wood with some holes in it. Uh, you got your little squares for measuring. I've got Zimret tools. Um, down a bit further here we've got the magnifiers. So I use one of those. So you really do if you're doing fine detail like figure faces, uh, eyes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, a little knife set, got some more pliers, uh, some more photo etch stuff. There's a full boat building kit which is handy. It's got the plank bender in as well. There's a little nailer for wooden kits as well. You put a little nail in the end, it's held in with a magnet and then you just push it in. And then we've got all the uh, decal papers as well for printing your own decals. So we've got them for inkjet printers and also for um, uh, laser printers. And then from here we've got over We've got all our sanding equipment on this side. So this is really popular at the moment, the pre-cut sanding paper, which is basically the same as all the regular stuff, but it's already in a handy little box and there's quite a few in each packet. We've got the GSI sanding papers. We've got the Tamiya sanding papers and we've got wet and dry type ones as well, all the way up to super fine stuff. And then we've got some weathering uh, powders here. These are really easy to use. Um, I'll get into that a bit uh, later too. I'll show you the techniques, super easy. Uh, then we've got the, the finishing type sheets. So this is um, just for rubbing down plastic to get rid of the shine. We've got all the sanding sticks. We normally have uh, from one mil. So you get one mil all the way up to the really wide stuff, which is a 40 mil uh, masking tapes. We've got some uh, the cotton wool buds, which are really handy because these ones, unlike the regular ones that you get from a uh, supermarket or uh, for use for cosmetics, these are really tight. So using them for decals uh, or for paint, uh, they don't come apart. And then we've got uh, the masking putties, which is really good for doing camouflage. Uh, that's by SMS. And then we've got all the filling putties and polishing compounds. And then we've got all these, uh, the glue tips, the mixing sticks. Uh, we've got all the different pipettes. These are really good too. These are little stainless steel trays for mixing your paint. Uh, the guys that use lacquers really like these. And then we've got uh, basic thread lock. We've got some uh, disposable brushes, epoxy glues. Uh, this is really interesting stuff. A bit hard to see because it's all in Japanese, but that's a little gel, which um, you can fix things down. And when you shake it, it doesn't fall down. So it was initially designed for holding glasses and things. And in Japan, they get a lot of earthquakes. So you can use that for, you know, like trains, for holding down figures, and then you can pull off the, the stuff and you can move it elsewhere. Uh, we've got the modeling wax. And then we've got all the different um, cutting mats. Tamiya ones are really good. You've got your sort of narrow A3 type, A4, and then you've got your big A3. That pretty much sums it all up. But um, yeah, in the future, we'll go through a bit more detail and um, we'll learn how they all work. Thanks.